What is up, bros? Me Josh. In today's video, we are doing another episode of Breaking It Down, my series where I go over some gameplay I had, break it down. Hopefully, it gives you guys better insight of what I'm thinking and why I'm doing it, and hopefully, it helps you guys just play out in the future. This has been a pretty uh, popular series so far, so I'm glad you guys are helping it out. One thing that's been requested a lot recently is uh, Destroyer play now, now recently with the move to the USN line. Um, to the USN cruisers, there's been a lot more radar. So there's been just tons and tons and tons of radar. So people have had a lot of trouble playing destroyers and I've actually really been enjoying destroyers. Um, I'm not quite on the team of, of radar being overpowered. There is a way to play around with it. Yes, there's a lot of it right now, but that's to be expected with the line change. And there's gonna be a lot more to come, especially when the light cruisers hit um, because more ships are just gonna have it. There's gonna be a ton of radar for a long time. So it does definitely make the life of a destroyer harder especially when there's an enemy CV divved with a, um, a radar. So this is kind of a double down and we're on a map that is pretty favorable for radar ships and we are on hotspot. There's two DMs, so actually not too bad with radar, potentially up to four with the Yu Yangs with those getting more and more popular. But one thing that I have to look forward to is um, the Yu Yangs can't hit me with Torps and the Tashkent I'm not too worried about because I'll spot him and luckily the, the Tashkent is over A cap, so I am on B. Now, one thing I'm really looking forward to on this map is C cap is very, very sketchy and A cap is also very sketchy because if you have ever played these, if you've ever played ranked or whatever, clan battles, these are very good spots. There's almost always a radar ship right here. Almost always, this is another popular spot um, for radar ships on this point right here, but I'm expecting this since the planes are right there, I assume that he would spawn there. And yes, I'm using radio location, potato location, whatever you want to call it, whatever, get over it. But um, I'm assuming there's going to be a, be a guy there and we're looking for the red two clan. And so there he is to be expected. Um, but C cap is super, super hostile for this. So what am I doing? I love going into the middle on this map because one, it, it lets me spot a ton of ships. I'm going to be able to spot ships on A cap. I'm going to be able to spot ships on, on B cap. And I'm not going to go crazy aggressive. Um, into one of the caps because if I go into C cap, I'm basically stuck there because I'm just gonna get perma radar again As we see normally you're gonna have one of the typical radar spots um, With a DM right there. So to be expected and to be expected radar ship right there It's very very systematic with how these guys play um, With how most ships play because those are just good spots But I'm gonna keep this guy perma spotted and remember Des Moines have 9.9 .9 radar But we can outspot him with his detection. So I'm gonna try to chill on that right around 10 kilometer 10.1 10.2 yes it's it's not that big of a margin but i'm gonna try to stop this cap also you can see i'm gonna spend a little bit more time sitting broadside in, in caps than i normally do because of um i can't get hit by yang torp so there's no there's no real reason to kind of sit kind of like that the only reason i'm doing um this kind of north south uh in this cap is because i'm trying to not get smashed and have an easy out from the said, said Des Moines. But since I know he can't torp me in smoke, I'm just gonna obliterate as long as this DM is, is uh, spotted without my spotting. I'm just gonna get, put as much damage in as possible because the faster he's out, the faster we can get through C. So that's really, really important. Luckily we just killed the Yu Yang, so that's awesome. And I'm still looking for planes. I have to be very careful. Most people don't run this on the destroyer. I almost always do. You probably get CVs in your games in high tiers, I don't know, 10% of your time, it's actually really, really low. Uh, so what I like to do is I always like to run it no matter what. It's always just in case. Um, I would I would stay alive more times. And you'll see kind of the strength of even a non-AA spec gearing, just having that ability to pump out AA and basically split up the planes helps me stay alive through this whole game. Um, and our CV's actually been playing pretty well. So as you saw, the Yu Yang was spotted for a second. They did end up getting B cap, and we're gonna end up losing our Z46 here. But all in all, we're kind of trading a Z46 for a Yu Yang, which I'll I'll kind of take that trade. I think it's an up trade. The Yu Yang's torps are much more um, dangerous than a Z46, and the planes are coming in. So it sucks to lose a destroyer. He is gonna pump in a little bit of damage, but. As you saw, instead of trying to focus on this Yu Yang, I'm trying to focus on the DM because the faster the DM gets out, the faster we can take that side of the map and the faster I can be more aggressive because the only thing that's going to have an angle on me is this DM. So one thing I really like about B cap and we saw that he rotated out, so I'm going to be kind of safe, but I'm worried about the planes. He pulled his planes away, even though I think he knew where I was. So it ends up working out and I'm going to throw some torps in there kind of blind 
potentially with the Tashkin, I was thinking maybe he would rotate north because there's a Missouri there. And I was like, hey, maybe the DM will push in. The DM ended up pushing in, so it ended up, ended up working out. So again, I'm going to try to pester BCAP and just get vision. But I am being very aware of what these planes are doing. Again, as you can see, almost always when I play a DD, I always have my AA off. Yes, I know certain DDs have. Um, basically, you're going to get spotted anyway um, when you shoot for, for planes. So I know a lot of people just keep it on. I just keep it off just to have good practice because if maybe you're forgetting which ones are which. So um, it's always a good thing to kind of keep in mind. To I always hit P right at the start of the match and then flip, flick it on when I need it. Because most of the time, I just don't want to be detected by planes. If I am, there's potential for me to take a massive salvo. So, this is actually the, the play I like the most. And, um, so I th is it this play right here? I think it's this play. So, I'm getting lit by planes right now. We're gonna see. I think this is the play right here. This is one I was super excited for. And this was awesome. These torps were spotted for a long time. And I think we ended up getting two on this guy. So, I think we end up tagging him. Yeah, we end up getting him with another one. So, they might have just missed those planes. So, let's CV actually moving his torps out. Um, was pretty awesome. So this is the reason why right here that I love rocking AA. Um, not only is it going to just basically spread the planes apart, everyone thinks, well, my ship has bad AA rating. Why would I want uh, AA consumable? It's not that you're trying to get clear skies. It's just you're trying to panic the planes. And when you panic the planes, you end up knocking a couple out. Luckily, the Gearing's AA is decent. And luckily, this guy went all the way around. He was trying to do, I think, a manual drop. So luckily they're a midway that's trying to do a manual drop so it's really easy to avoid and then I'm just gonna keep focusing uh, one thing I like to do too is a lot of people will just stick on one uh, one set as you can see he tried to continue to rotate around so what that did is it gave me more time to shoot down a couple more planes we end up getting five and we're gonna help with these uh, fighters as much as possible but one thing I like to do is I like to shoot out a couple from one and then switch targets because what's this going to do is going to help it's going to get rid of the guaranteed seven or, or it's the six torpedo drop so that's what i like to do um i think i see a lot of people will focus again here as you can see i switch targets well you can't see which one i'm clicking on um but i actually switch targets um from the left one to the right one at one point and then back and forth because i want them to both get awkwardly low on planes because if they're both awkwardly low he's going to send them back to give our cv um, another chance to potentially um, to potentially uh, get some uh, a fighter advantage. If he sends them both back, the midway fighters take a long time to reload. So you'll see me switch on planes a lot instead of just zeroing out one. I would rather two torp squads be like instead of them being like a six and a and a zero, I'd rather them both be three. If that makes any sense, because I want them to be harder to drop instead of the basic one. So. This is, a, this is the play right here. So I, I threw the first set of torps right on that point for the DM. And this was probably the best play of this game. And as you can see right here, this Yu Yang thinks he's safe in smoke because he probably thinks I shot. So what am I doing right here? I'm staying detected. And what do I mean by that is he's going to continue to shoot. As you can see, he's continuing to shoot as long as I'm detected right here. He's going to stay in that smoke. And I can tell he's sitting broadside because of I can see all the five shells being pretty lined up now we get robbed of a dm kill here but i'm continuing to shoot and to get detected because i want him to stay in that smoke because if he stays in that smoke and doesn't move that means he's going to take a torp and that's exactly what he did so we completely outplayed that guy i could have easily gone dark but if i would have gone dark he would have had nothing to shoot at so i wanted to give him a target yes i traded eleven thousand life for it but still i gave him a target so he continued to shoot he got very greedy there and sat broadside and smoke. As you saw, I almost launched the second set at that DM, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway if I did that, but I held on to that because he initially locked up that. So he thought that probably that DM would keep me radared or whatever, and as long as I was there, he was gonna continue to fire. So we completely outplayed that guy. Again, if I go dark there, he just moves because he has no target. He may have stayed and, and started to shoot at the Yamato, so who knows in the end, but um, uh, that's the reason why I did that, and that's the reason why I continue to shoot. Most destroyers will stay in smoke to get the damage on a destroyer, and I will gladly take that trade for, and I think we were just out of range for that. I don't know. As you can see, I'm trying to zoom in to see if I scatter it. So I did scatter it. See, it's, it's not about shooting down a bunch of planes. It's about just scattering out the planes. He would have taken so much more damage, probably four instead of two right there, um, and we're just in that range. So we're just going to continue to push up and then do a bit more damage on this guy and, uh, and see what we can do. But again, what I was doing there 
was giving him a target to continue to shoot because they were in a, a spot that they needed to start getting frags. As you can see, they're down by um, they're down by five ships, I think, right now. Was that four ships? And um, uh, down by four ships before somebody yells at me in chat. Um, but yeah, so that's the reason why I did it. I gave him a target to shoot at, which means he was going to continue to to keep shooting down there, keep throwing shots out, which means he would stay broadside. Again, if there was only like two shells coming out, I know he wouldn't be broadside. So I basically tried to just take advantage of him getting greedy in that smoke. And again, you can always see when I turn on turn on planes and turn off plane or turn off AA. You can always see that in the, in the bottom left corner. Um, I don't always keep AA on uh, by any means, so I, I tend to shut it off a lot, get this cap, I don't want to be detected, and um, go dark, get this cap, and then keep putting pressure on this team. But uh, in the end, though, I traded 11k, because basically a DD with one life is as dangerous, if not more dangerous, for Torp Reload because of Adrenaline Rush. So I'm willing to trade, I think he had about 12k or something like that so health wise it was um it was almost a one for one trade uh, total health pool wise and uh so if you look at it just number wise it's these it's not that good of a trade it's maybe a little bit of a trade if not a push but i killed that destroyer so i'll make that trade any day of the week and we can start farming this montana but as you saw this whole game I knew where the DMs were, I knew where the destroyers were kind of were, I was aware of where the planes were going to be, keeping an eye on those, and as you can see, I didn't overextend. If I overextend north, that DM just wrecks me, right? So you have to be very careful. Also, some quick tips right here. If you're in smoke, this guy's obviously focusing on me. Um, what you want to do is you want to kind of mess with what he sees. Again, as you, as you saw earlier, I could tell that Yu Yang was firing broadside at me because I could see all five shells. Obviously, um, one thing right here is he put that blind shot, and you can smash people with, with blind shots all the time, especially at five kilometers if you line it up. So one cool tip is to start ripple firing every once in a while. Throw him off, move around, but don't just sit in one spot and just continue to blast all your salvos. So right now, as you can see, I'm waiting for him to shoot. He shot that first salvo. I knew his guns weren't on me. And uh, we're going to kind of punish this guy a little bit. So first level will go in. And we're just watching him. So one one cool tip to not just get absolutely blasted. And we're waiting for our torps to see how much damage we can get. Um, and I'm trying to see where, exactly where he's moving by the angle of his ship. Is focus on throwing off what he sees now if he's only seen two salvo or two shells coming out that means that one either it's just especially on a gearing um it's mean he i'm either angled in or angled away it's a really hard target to hit but if he's constantly seeing all the shells i mean if you're shooting into smoke you can see a perfect profile of what is actually going on with um with with the guns you, you actually see where they're coming from so you can see almost a line of the ship so you see where those guns are you shoot a little bit lower you're right at the water line bingo bango that's a dead destroyer so um this is a cool little tip to kind of just throw off don't sit in one spot and smoke continue to move um to uh start throwing a ripple fire in every once in a while because it's hard to do and and you don't need to get the full salvo off so just maybe get one wait for the reload now, I'm just explaining the chat right now <laughs> what's going on, what I was trying to do in there. So a couple a couple uh, things to keep in mind in this. One, know where the radar ships are going to be. They are almost going to go there every time because they're so strong in those spots. So again, radar, uh, uh, this is from South Spawn. So radar here, radar here, radar here. And then you can potentially get an, uh, an aggressive radar right here. Everything else is kind of random. Um, I mean, you could potentially see like a radar here, but that's super, super aggro and not going to happen that many times. So what are you going to do? You're going to play that range game of basically having him be at 9.9 .9 kilometers, knowing the, the radar range of that. Remember, US send ships at this tier are going to be 9.9, .9, Russian are going to be 11.7. So they're a little bit harder to play around Russian because of the range is so much. And um, he actually gets pretty lucky here on this drop. But... Um, Knowing that and then playing with that. So I didn't overextend. I tried to give my team vision, which I did. I pumped in damage on ships that needed to happen. As you can see, I went kind of guns on that DM. And he ends up getting this tarp. I was super bummed about this. The panic drop actually helped him out there getting one. I mean, I probably would have died um, regardless if, if I didn't get the panic drop. But still, it was kind of a bummer to, uh, to get that. So we fixed the repair. And he'll actually get crazy lucky right here. Um, but luckily, we time out and we'll survive so 
a couple things to just uh, hopefully I showed you guys uh, and, and kind of help you guys with your play. This has been really requested for a while. Some destroyer play with as much um, radar is going on. So Hotspot is a super hostile map for a lot of DD play. And as you can see, I love playing the mid. I'd probably play the mid anyways if there weren't even if there wasn't even a B cap, if it's the triangle setup, I'd still probably play middle because of the opportunities you can get with torping on that point and being uh, getting the, those radar ships out of their spot. And of course, you get vision on top of that. So again, radar ships and a CV, a DD's nightmare, but there's easily way there's easy ways to play around with it. And then messing with DD's 200 IQ plays and keeping them in smoke be by giving them a target. So use their greediness. Um, against them and you can be super successful yourself. So anyways, guys, this episode of Breaking It Down, my series where I go in and break down what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. We sank a nice little game. Um, three kills, over 100,000 damage, always good with some mad credits and some uh, some uh, progress towards the uh, Halsey missions as well. And um, top of the team. There we go, boys. So hope this helps you out. Hope this gives you a good view of what's going on with DD play right now and just how to play around some of the new obstacles that that are with this line change and with how much radar so anyways guys hope you guys enjoyed this video remember like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time